wonderful to hear from you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, now, it's a humble request to His Excellency Dr. Angelia Valisikyu for your speech, and it would be wonderful to hear you. She is educator and international speaker, the English Academy of Language, Greece. Welcome you, ma'am, for your talk. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, okay. Let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? May I start? Yes? Yes, absolutely. Thank okay. you. Okay. The concept of woman empowerment, what exactly do we mean by this? Has it got to do with hegemony? Has it got to do with power relations? And who is the hegemon? Are we talking about the male prevalence or are we talking about the female dominance? Well, should there be any asymmetry in power relations? No, there should be gender equality. There should be symmetry in power relations. Exactly following the symmetry that we see in buildings and in architecture. Exactly as the symmetry is there in nature and we talk about the harmony ideology because the controversy is of less survival value in comparison to consensus and agreement. Sustainability requires gender equality because it is the ability to see far beyond all the dangers of a globalized world and make the future become more vital because the growth and change must be sustainable for all the next generation that are supposed to come. Let's discuss the sustainability pillars in this Venn diagram. There are three pillars, the environmental one, the social and the economic. As for the economic, we require economic growth. And I will explain later on uh, what exactly it means by uh, focusing on the economic uh, spectrum, the environmental one and the social one. Before I do this, I would like to continue with some truisms and realizations upon the underpinning philosophy of the UN Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, that every individual has the right to the full development of the human personality and to the strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Even the European Consensus on Development identifies women as key agents of development and change. And the EU global strategy defines gender equality and women empowerment as the cross-cutting priorities for all European policies. We should never forget that when we talk about women empowerment, we also talk about the sustainable development and empowering women and girls at the same time. So are we talking here about the rise of women in relation to the fall of men? Of course not. We're not going to talk about radical feminism. I'm not going to explain what radical feminism is because I decided to talk about the empowerment feminism, which is another notion of feminism. And I consider it to be the tool for contemporary women's advancement. I would like to start, first of all, with the, the words of Sandra Lee Bartke in her work, Phenomenology of Feministic Consciousness, and I'm going to read the words per se, so as not to lose their value. So she said that women have long lamented their condition, but lament, pure and simple, need not be an expression of feminist consciousness. If their situation is apprehended as natural, inevitable, and inescapable, women's consciousness of themselves is not yet feminist consciousness. This consciousness emerges only when there exists a genuine possibility for the partial or total liberation of women. 
Feminist consciousness contains within itself a notion of escaping a particular condition which is oppressive, rather than merely recognizing the cognition as oppressive. Here we have the five-partite processuality and multidimensionality nature of the empowerment feminism. It consists of the social empowerment, the educational empowerment, the economic empowerment, the political one, and the psychological one. Why social empowerment? Because if we focus on the social aspect, it's like giving women a purpose outside the house. Their contributions to society needs to be recognized and valued. Why educational empowerment? Because through the power of education, we have self-confidence and self-esteem and self-sufficiency. It brings light of hope. It increases all the social, political, intellectual, cultural, and religious consciousnesses. It broadens the length of the mind and it removes, it eliminates the kinds of bigotry, narrowness, superstition, or any other kind of prefabricated ideology, and it enhances and ameliorates a fellow feeling of tolerance and otherness. Why economic empowerment? Because through the economic empowerment, women can raise their voice and their visibility, their existence. It is not possible unless there is an access to the ownership of the economic resources by the underprivileged women. Why political one? because the women's political empowerment suggests the decentralization of the power and authority. In other words, it's the transfer of control. By joining the politics, people, especially women, feel themselves that they are empowered. It's like going up the ladder for upward mobility in society, in the hierarchical ladder. It is a route to empowerment for all the underprivileged and the deprived people and political participation through political participation, people can find opportunities to change and not only change, but influence all the public decisions and become decision makers. Why psychological empowerment? According to Ramesh 2003, the empowerment of women concerns women gaining control and power over their own lives. But he opposes the idea of empowering women from the outside and the external factors because he feels it should come out from within. Through this kind of psychological empowerment, women, the, the, the purpose of women is twofold. It transgresses the traditional and the patriarchal taboos and the social obligations, and it can really change their subjectivities, their inner selves. When women join educational institutions, become a part of decision-making bodies, take decisions and travel in different places, they occupy land and wealth. They feel psychologically empowered, elevated, and that can boost their self-confidence. What would be an action plan since, all, since we saw this holistically uh, aspect of the empowerment of women? What would be an effective method? In my opinion, there lies the answer in the power of woman connectivity. And I'm going to suggest very, very briefly some key organizations that every woman needs to know because we're talking about the power of women connecting. And in that case, in every single link I'm going to give, we can see a holistic, a holistic uh, pattern that covers diverse female target groups, educated women, vulnerable domestic violence and minority ethnic groups. Through this kind of connectivity, women partic can participate in events, they can socialize, they can interact, they can empower each other, they can develop professionally. So the women's networking is one of the most important things I'm going to analyze. These are the links. I'm not going to refer to each one of these uh, in detail. I'm just going to say the, the names. We have the American Medical Women's Association that improves the women's health. We have the Anita B. Org that supports women in technical fields. We have the Association of Communications that has to do with the advancement of women across all communications disciplines. The American Association of University Women that advances equity. The Financial Women's Association through which women can attain greater recognition for their achievements in business and can be encouraged to seek any kind of career opportunities. The General Federation of Women's Club it focuses on the community improvement. The National Association of Female Executives for Women Professionals and Business Owners. 
the national uh, community here of Jews, an organization that can inspire Jewish values to strive for social justice, and the National Business Association, whose support, who support is the rapid growth and successes of Latina business owners and professionals. The National Organization for Women to bring about equality for all women, a National Women's Business Council to promote initiatives, policies, and programs designed to support the business enterprises at all stages of development, and the rapturous women's leadership dedicated to the promotion of women's leadership. The Women Impacted Public Policy that advocates for and behalf of women and minorities in business, and it builds alliances. The Women in Technology International that empowers women in business and technology, and the women of communications in all areas of communications empowerment. And the most important ones, the last two, is the YWCA USA, because this mission here of that uh, organization is to eliminate racism and to empower women. And the Zonda one, the Zonda stands for women's rights, advocating for equality in education. So as we can see, there are many women around, women around the world, and the females represent a considerable part of the world's population. We understand that if we see and we have a look at this, at this demographics map, we realize that we're more than half of the world's thesaurus and more than half of the world's potential. So a takeaway message from me, and according to the words of Anthony, quoted, who quoted the Gorbachev, the former president of the USSR, said that the status of women is a barometer of the democratism of any state and an indicator of how human rights are respected in it. This is a respect for me that liberates and defines the eudaimonic air women breathe. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Elizabeth Lucas. So, uh, she's not with us. Yes, yes she takes time for Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, you, sir. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, it's audible. It's audible. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Protocol I observed. Greetings from United Kingdom. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Lucas, award winning author, speaker, and founder, CEO of Yes You Can International. I'm grateful to be sharing this amazing platform with all our chief guests and keynote speakers, panelists, and honorable distinguished women, let me also give my gratitude to the president and chairman of American International Education Federation and the great organizers of this event. And the theme of this conference is Women in Decision Making, Protection of Our Girls, Child, and Sustainable Development. Thank you so much. And we appreciate all work being done to make this conference a successful one. And I want to say congratulations. Happy International Women's Day. May our women and our children be protected, their voice to be heard, and needs to be met. People around the world have been recognizing March 8th as a special day for women for almost a century. The seeds for its birth were sown in 1908. 50,000 women demonstrated in New York City for shorter working hours, better pay, 
and the right to vote. Till now, this reminds us that there are still more to be done. International Women's Day has become a day to celebrate and celebrate the process of women socially, politically, and economically. However, my duty this afternoon or this morning is to share with you today to inspire us all as a woman. Woman, yes, you can. It is time for women to rise up and shine. Know who you are. You are precious, unique, special, intelligent, clever, creative, powerhouse, extraordinary, industrial, peacemaker, dream builder, and helper, emotional support. You are also a woman of wisdom woman of beauty, role model, inspiration, influential, woman of substance, woman of greatness. Let me challenge you today as a woman. Know your purpose and your passion. Speak out as we are doing now. We are all gathering together in this conference. We are sharing our thoughts, our ideas, our experiences, and also we are sharing the way forward. Let me challenge you. Women, let us unite together wherever we are all over the world. Unite together to make the world better. We can do it. Women know and understand and exercise your right and even support others. Like I've always said, some of us might know our rights, but some don't. It is time for us to help one another all over the world. Educate yourself and occupy, occupy your place. Mark, Malcolm X said, education is our passport to future. For tomorrow, belongs to the people who prepare today. Empower yourself. Empower yourself. Empower yourself, sorry. And support others. Let's know our rights. And let us also share it with others. This is our time to stand together. We have so many rules and regulations. We have women's rights, child's rights. But you will believe with me that not everyone understands it or knows it. So we should prepare or we should make an awareness more to those people that didn't have that opportunity or have access to all this, and let us educate them. This is our time to shine. My question is, are we ready? Yes, you can. Elizabeth Lucas Afolal, thank you for inviting me. God bless you. Thank you so much. Can you help? So, Her Excellency from Belgium, Dr. Iman, ma'am, will you please? Will you please unmute your mic, ma'am? Dr. Iman from Belgium, will you please unmute, unmute your? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody here from Belgium. You hear me now? Yes, <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. So it's my opportunity today to be here with you, all of you here. 
it's my pleasure also. This is uh, the first time uh, with all of you. So the first of all, this is the first time I'm uh, working in the piece because before I was in, uh, working with my husband in the ambassador here in Belgium. So it's my pleasure to working now in peace. So for the moment, I am a president of the International Commission of IOPSH in Belgium and volunteer of uh, Union European. I have a Nobel Peace uh, also, International Federation Global Peace Organization leader. So I would like, I don't know what I must say because <laughs> all of them uh, speaking what I prepared uh, before. But now I would like to say something is very, very important for all the women. That is mean, Eve is God's gifts to Adam, okay? And gifts are according to the amount given. So all the women in this world as a gift for all the men in this life. That's right, yes? The, so I will begin now. I'm talking all, with all the women. Be award, educated, and debating, and renewed, arouse the administration of people who deserve to share life with you. And don't accept that you are just a beautiful face that pleased the beholders. Uh, search, think, discuss, and defend your opinion and proud in yourself. So there is, I would like to say some uh, issue, Averius, what did he say, Averius? While his uh, student was uh, shedding tears over burning books, his teacher told him, son, if you were crying over the books that were burned, then know that thoughts have wings while they fly with them to their owners. But if you cry in the cases of a woman, now that if you turn the sea of the world into tears, they will not be enough. So will not just crying for the cases of the women, only because we have a problems. That's right, all these years we have a problems. Uh, with the issues of women. So in the European Union and the United Nations joined forces to launch to the spirit uh, anti-VA. Multi-years global anti-viation focused of eliminating all for, uh, forms of violence against women and girls. The international days, the elimination of uh, violence against women and celebrated on November 25, Women's Day, and other celebration, International Women's Days, in the celebration annually now in March. So they explained everything before. I would like to speak about the language. Gender-wide language uh, guidelines, regardless of the key rule that language play in the shaping culture and society social attitude. The use of gender inclusive in a language is a powerful way to promote gender equality and eliminate gender basis by 2030 after 2030. International Women's Day is an occasion to reflect on the progress uh, made, to advocate the change and celebrate the ordinary work of women in their courage to the resilience is playing explosion roles in the history of this country's association. I want to say something now, if you know something globally, women are 20, 30% less than men. Only 24% of parliaments sits are head by women worldwide. A third of women have experienced physically violence or sexually assault, and 200 million girls suffer from the party, uh, sorry, the priestess of female gentle uh, martyrdom. The generation education 
Camping brings together people of every gender, age, race, religions, and country to promise action to create it a world in which we all enjoy gender equality. International Day of Women and Girls in the Science, February, February 11, transforming a mobility image. Science and gender equality are key factors in achieving the global goals, the sustainable development key in 2030, which were adopted by world leaders in 2015. Over the past 15 years, society has worked international institute and the dedicate to the inclusion of women and girls in the field of science. Unfortunately, women, the girls are still ex uh, executed from fully participating in this area. At the present, women present less than 30% of researches. Oh, sorry, I am here. Excuse me. We'll go to the next one. Yes, research. Uh, 25, 15 years, the women and girls are still excluded from the participating in this area. At the present, women respond less than 30% of research worldwide, according to UNESCO data. Uh, uh, 2014-2016, only about 30% of the female student, student choice field related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in higher education. Globally, female enrollment in law in the information and communication technology, 3%. Natural science, mathematics, and uh, statistics, uh, statistics, five percent, and engineering, manufacturing, and construction, eight percent. So we have uh, really a big problems. Women and girls avoid science-related field due to all the budgets and gender uh, stratification and the ground what appears in the screen reflects similar pieces. Dr. Iman, will you please, a uh, few minutes. We'll give you a break and we'll discuss later. <laughs> yes, That's enough. Uh, Dr. Okay. Swati Chikarati, please. Thank you for you thank all, you. yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, you. Now, actually, we are already open our discussions towards yes. the next step. That is the panel well, discussions. You from all over the world. So uh, I really welcome our next eminent speaker, uh, Apinihiti uh, Chaichana from Thailand. Ma'am, could you please mute yourself and please? Madam, please announce her name once again. She is there, but she has the microphone off. Afinita ma'am, Dr. Afinita ma'am from Thailand. I request Her Excellency, Dr. Afinita from, uh, from Thailand. Okay, now, do you hear me? Ah, yes, yes. yes. Ah, <laughs> okay, so, Adika, everyone, how are you? And thank you to uh, brother to this time to uh, give me the best opportunity. I really, really appreciate and meet the good people like to you all. This is uh, my first time to participate here. And I hope in the future, uh, we can try some more hand together for equality of the women in the world. I am from Thailand, uh, ready to support to all of you to try hand together to make a better place in everywhere with the uh, the woman, with the quality, right, all of you, ha, and really appreciate. And I hope to try you in next meeting. Thank you for your kind support, and I hope so many participants and congratulations to all of you. And please keep in touch. Hope to see you next time again, ha.
Thank you so much. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ It's a great honor to hear you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And uh, now um, I'm just checking the name. If uh, Professor Dr. Anita Purvar, if you are here. Dr. Iman Al Kwasi. Yes, I am already talking. It's over. It's over, ma'am. We'll so, take this. Madam, madam, please, please. Wait, wait, few seconds. Call the next guest, ma'am. Imam, ma'am, we'll be back once yes. again. Yes, I will. You yes. want to me? I uh, will be back next time. Swadhi, ma'am. Call the next. Yes. Guest. <laughs> okay, there's no thank, problem. Thank you. Dr. Jessica Asher, ma'am. His Excellency, Dr. Jessica, ma'am. No, no, it's okay because I prepared the, my reports wait, for wait. Uh, 13 pages, you know. One so second. I would like to speak about the uh, coffee, in fact. Yes, yes. Jessica, ma'am. Jessica yes. Asher. Yes, I'm ready. Ah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Yes, it's a pleasure. Yours. Great. First, God said, men, there will be good subservient women in all four corners of the globe. And then God made the world round and laughed and laughed. But in all seriousness, I would like to proposition an image of a lighthouse. You can imagine that the structure of the lighthouse is an image for the body of a woman. It needs to be very strong to withstand the horrible storms it will face. And you could imagine maybe the wiring of this lighthouse as, as her brain and it needs to be wired well together. And you can imagine the light comes from her heart. And before we are a woman, we are a girl. Research tells us that it is the father who instills self-confidence into the girl. So it's the male influence that builds our strength. And children rise to meet the expectations set of them. If we expect our daughters to clean dishes and raise amazing children, they will. If we expect our daughters to raise amazing children, do dishes and become the president, they will. Or a CEO or even a professor, they will meet our expectations. I'm a supporter of cultures all over the world. One of my projects is revitalization of local knowledges in Bangladesh, Pakistan and India. I mentor a 12 year old girl in Pakistan. Her name is Habiba Javed and she's brilliant. And her parents encourage her at every moment. She's a bright light. I mentor the head of an NGO, I speak in Algeria. Her name is Rosa Ouarda Benlakef. She empowers youth through communication, another bright light. But if you're in a country where female genital mutilation occurs, your light, your physical structure has been damaged and so is your heart. If you're not allowed to go to school, the wiring can't be built that will reflect this light from her heart. And if you're in a country where you can't leave your home, your light doesn't shine. We will be a voice for you until you can be a voice for yourself. But don't tell me that these things exist because it's my culture. We can, if we want to, evolve our culture. Culture is always changing. Culture is always growing. And we can. If you're in a developing nation and these things are occurring, are you surprised that you have less light? Are you surprised 
that you're not developing as fast as you want when 50% of your light has been put out. You're on the rocky shores, the rocky shoals. In order to get off the rocky shoals, you need more light. Let these girls and women shine. They need to play in the creeks as children and dance and climb mountains, climb trees in order to build that strong body to withstand the storms that life will give us. They need that education. We need that education. But here's the hope of it. So if you light this light, your cultures will develop. If you switch from control, if you switch away from subjugation or making her servantile to creating a space where she wants to be, you will experience more joy, and I mean physical joy and emotional joy, than you even know existed. So think about that. Don't be afraid of changing from control to joy. You, you don't even know what you don't even know yet. Remember this image of the lighthouse. Your women are light and let them shine. Thank you. Yes, we recognize the presence of Dr. Safa Alabadia from France. Hello. Do you hear me well? Yes, yes. I am Dr. Safa Al Hamaide from France, a French from Jordanian origin. I've been living in France since nearly 30 years now. I came to France as a young lady in my beginning of the 20s wasn't speaking one word in French. And I always said to my neighbors and the people that I knew by that time that my name, my first name, Safa, is just so much existing in France because I just hear everyone saying Sava, Sava everywhere. And I ended up by having laughs around me because Sava, Sava in French, that means how are you doing? And I've been hearing Safa, Safa everywhere as I, I wasn't speaking French. I was pregnant with my first baby, who is now a young boy, starting his life. By this time, I wanted to go see a doctor. And this doctor was uh, someone who did study in USA and speaks very well English. I went to her because... I was an English speaker, but not French speaker, and I wanted to speak and talk to my doctor. I told to this doctor, please, I will speak with you in English. She just told me, you can speak the language that you choose, but I will speak French, and it's your decision to come live in France, then it's up to you to learn French. I go get back home this day crying, insulting this lady, and saying to myself, Oh my God, how mean is she? But actually, she gave me the lesson of my life. Because after crying, I just dried my tears and I took the decision at 21 year old with no one French word in my bag luggage to learn French as fast as I can. And I did. Actually, in less than one year, I learned the French complicated language, so special, perfectly that my neighbor thought that I was born in France. And she never believed me when I told her, I just arrived like one year and a half in France. Actually, I, I just want to share this one story because I have a lot of stories, but this story means a lot for me because it was, one of the keys in my life that opened me a lot of doors, that made me being here today with you all, sharing my one of my experiences, telling all ladies all around the world that you can do. And I cannot 
just be standing, freezed, before this announcement, this call of yes, you can, that Madame Elizabeth Luca just sent it around all this conference mm -hmm. and say, no, I have nothing else to add. I have something else to add. To say again and again and again for all ladies all around the world, yes, you can. How, why? This is your own story. This is your own goal. This is your own experiences, but just be sure as everyone who just spoke and everyone he will speak in this conference that you, my lady, wherever you live, however your age, your look, your size, your physical way of appearance, yes, you can. The question is, what do you want to do? What kind of imprint you want to leave behind you when you pass through something or someone? That's why I'm calling through this conference for all women in the world to try to do their best to have their minds cleared up and to fix their own objectives very carefully and to see what is their priorities. This is three of a lot of keys, but I think this is one of the three major keys that you can have in your life, you ladies. Fix your objectives and arrange your priorities and believe in yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy, ma'am. So much, thank you. A brilliant back to back speaker. So, first of all, uh, Jessica, ma'am, it's like amazing starting with the enlightenment and power pack presentation, but in a very soft note. Thank you. And you spoke really well. Thank you so much, Safa, ma'am, for your wonderful, uh, you know, to the point. And uh, first, Jesse, ma'am, it's a kind of a philosophical aspect with the educational empowerment and how body and soul has been entitled with men and women relationships. Thank you so much. And Safa, ma'am, thank you so much for your uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you. I'm really, really happy to hear all of the presenters and it's a kind of a power pack, back to back presentation. Thank you so much. So thank next you. and uh, Actually, thank I want to you. Thank, thank you for this very nice opportunity because you. seeing all of these beautiful faces, <laughs> hearing all of this uh, very uh, mel the, this melody of, of words, saying the same thing but only differently with other another melody with another taste with another flavor. Thank you for this. Thank you so much. <laughs> what we can do, we just spread love harmony and positivity to the entire world. That's what we can do. So uh, everyone is having their own problem, issues, violations, complex mind. But now with this, I think this spirit and this positivity is going to enter into our uh, soul and we will be more you know, enriched with the positivity. So in the next uh, generation that I'm a mother also, so next generation, we are actually uh, penetrate the positivity in, into our children. So that's the uh, real empowerment with the womanhood to motherhood itself. So thank you so much, Safa, ma'am. Thank you. It's a great honor to hear yes, all of you. My email, my phone number, and my a small CV of mine in the chat. And I would love to keep in contact with the, all of these beautiful ladies with all of these experiences. We still have a lot to share and a lot of experiences to learn one over each other. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. So now I would like to request our next eminent speaker, if uh, she's with us. So uh, His Excellency Chairperson Raina Katri Tandem, if uh, you are with us so kindly, please Ram. present your presentation. Okay, she's not there. It takes time. Next, next one, please. And next person. So, uh, His Excellency Doctor Dipti Badoria, ma'am. It's wonderful to hear you, ma'am. I think you are here. So, Dipti, ma'am, kindly unmute yourself and 
speak, share your views. Professor Dr. Diti, ma'am. She's there. I saw, ma'am. I saw her. Yes, yes. I too. Diti, ma'am. Madam, go to the next one. Okay. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Caroline, ma'am. Caroline Makaka, ma'am. Hello, can you hear me? Ah, yes, ma'am. It's audible. Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I just want to talk about uh, the education for the girl child. So, you know, every day girls face barriers to education caused by uh, poverty. So girls education go beyond getting girls into school. It is also about ensuring that our girls learn and feel safe while in school. They should also have the opportunity to complete all levels of education, acquiring the knowledge and skills to complete in the labor market, as well as giving them opportunity to make decisions about their own lives and contribute to their communities and the world. Uh, girls' education is a strategic development priority better education women tend to be more informed about nutrition, health care, have fewer children, and marry at a later age. And children are usually healthier should they choose to become mothers. They are more likely to participate in the formal labor market and can earn higher incomes. These are factors combined. This, these factors combined can help lift households, community, and countries out of the poverty. Um, so in conclusion, I just want to share a message uh, during this International Women's Day. My message is we all have gifts, we all have ideas, we all have skills, but a gift can only be a gift when you share it. So I just encourage you to share that gift that you have. So I would say, uh, share your gift to the world that is waiting for a change that we are creating. We are creating a change because we are the change. Thank you so much, Dr. Caroline Makaka. Thank you. So much, Karen. Um, wonderful to hear you. And it's always to have a voice of women from all over the world. Like when we are sitting in India and can hear from a very, very far, but it's kind of a soul sister feelings that we are having right now. So thank you so much, Karen, ma'am. Thank you. Now I would like to request our next honorable speaker. His Excellency, Miss Anita Raju, ma'am. Ma'am, are you with us? Anita, yes, ma I'm there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. The mic is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Very good evening, good morning, uh, based on whatever time zones that you're in. And all the noble souls together coming forward for a wonderful cause. This is the better day. This is the best day, rather, to talk about the uh, reforms for women. From the fourth international conference of UN, where in Beijing, 196 countries came forward okay, and brought a lot of reforms. From there, a lot of changes have happened in women in reforms, be it in family laws and regulations, and even in terms of uh, uh, prevention prohibition of uh, 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 even sexual harassment against women and a lot of other things as well. But still, we are not yet there because it's not one problem that is just cropped up in between. Our ancestors knew the problems that the women faced. Our Immediate parents knew what the problems were, and we all know what the real problems the world is facing, the women are facing. It is an identity crisis. So you come into a room, all of them are there. You know you're there pretty much in the room. If people don't recognize you, you're lost. There is an identity crisis. That is what is happening now. They very well know they have the potential. They are very good. 
they can achieve things they don't have to wait for someone to come and give the power to them and say hey yeah i'm just giving you the space go ahead and achieve something from the world every woman should come forward take that one small step to reach out to one of the volunteers one of the social setup that is easily available to them in their environment grab the opportunity and soar high we can talk about i'm not just touching upon the problems as such but if you look at it we need to look at tools be it financial tools technological tools and a lot of social platforms currently uh, social platforms are trending so all the world dignitaries all uh, the presidents prime ministers and different kingdoms coming together towards this one voice women empowerment protection of human right to every child to every woman to every body in this world working towards world peace should be that one unified goal and we will all achieve it hey women you are whole you're perfect and you're complete you are power your strength the day you realize your potential you break the rules of control and you will soar high the entire world has come through and one initiative that i feel would really help is all of us have come together now can we make 50% of the world population as the volunteers of such a social setup who can contribute who can create awareness who can create the channel of communication for women around the world for children around the world to voice out their problems to voice out their opinions i think when we believe that a man and a woman has come together is the proof why we all are here our existence is confirmed by that if you believe in that then definitely all men and women of this world will come together to create the peace that we want the rights that we want we will all come together again we will be doing this not just as one initiative one particular conference in a year but we will be doing more such sessions we will be creating awareness we will help everybody across the world to attain human rights thank you so much so much anita ma'am thank you it's really wonderful to hear you so now i move on to the next speaker uh dr lovely uh, p yo dr lovely you so dr lovely is here or not I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Now the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. It's a great honor to be amongst you on this auspicious day. My lens will be focused on women and girls from an African perspective and the hope for the present. Men have enjoyed more privileges not majorly on the premise of merit or effective diligence but the unfair favoritism of being a male while the women and girls have suffered injustices from the family institutions to public institutions with their rights trampled upon their dreams coercively snatched from them as they are sacrificed on the altar of slavery and inequality this has been one of the major global problems impeding growth and development and as human kind we all have a role to play in solving this disheartening and obnoxious issue there was a time when women were banned from voting from driving until today the other forms of oppression continues as they are politically ostracized economically silenced as well as barred from equal pay for doing same job same hours they get discriminated against 
passed over while even more sound and effective than their male counterpart simply because she is a woman. Now I ask, what have the women done to deserve the prejudice? It's widely observed in some African culture where the voice of reasoning, gifted and wisdom to advise against the wrongs within the family is shown because she's a woman. She's yelled at to ash and she isn't permitted to speak where a man is. She gets treated like she's less of a human being. Sometime in 2007, a father of four girls died intestate. His landed property was seized by his cousins and shared among them rather than his own progeny. This to say was according to their cruel man-made customs. Their only solution was if he had a son. This had made some families adopt a male and the girls get disinherited, handing what is rightfully theirs to a stranger because they are women. To some communities, the birth of a child was received with sadness and seemed like a curse, which has led to some women driven out of their matrimonial homes. The boy child is pampered, favored, and treated like a king, while the girls are treated as slaves, crowned with thorns of blames for every wrong committed by the boy. Consequently, he is directly taught to oppress and dominate by force without respect and dignity. This is one of the deep-rooted cause of the challenges we face today that needs a change. Some are clouded with the stereotypical ill saying mm -hmm. that it's a waste of time for a woman to be educated because your degrees end up in the kitchen. They are wrongly conditioned to think she has no other purpose than being only a property to serve and to pamper every man's ego. Why keep subjecting women to malign malice and injustices? The girl child, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, gets deprived of a right to self-determination, a right to make choices or realize her dreams, and a right to a better future. She's married off by her parents to a very old man against a wish as a ransom for a debt, some in order to get an early bride price and money to take care of themselves and the boy child. The girl child, like the boy, have a dream. They have a vision and mission she inspires to fulfill as every human being was made for but where's a right against exploitation? Where's a right to education where you deprive her of the key? Where's a right to life and choice of true freedom when you choke a choice and crush a purpose? Where's the right to equality? Where's the right to achieve and be treated with dignity? Why keep tilting the world to an imbalance through the eccentric and barbaric laws made and imposed by men. Today, we call for a change by us to undo and repeal, to clear the deep gully between women and decision-making, to protect and promote the rights of a girl child, thus curbing the societal ills that womankind have been subjected to. Decision-making is not a measure of biceps or triceps. It's about responsibility and a sound heart towards service, the greater good. God has also blessed women with a sense of responsibility, the innate ability to multitask, to nurture affairs and lead in the call to service. It is a right to empower, inspire and be inspired. A right to live a dreams, a right not just to education, but to benefit from its fruits, which is being able to partake, contribute towards building the life of community, 
and the growth of a social, economic, and political sphere. We have seen women who have gone ahead, pulled the worth, and excelled efficiently, exceptionally. International Women's Day is one where the voices of women silence breathe liberty. It is time to rise and take our place as an active driver in decision making because we are the missing piece. The major percentage potential that's been left out but strongly needed to move the community, society, and the world forward towards the attainment of a sustainable and better world. Let's come together, not just as women or men, but as humans to do what is right for a proper balance. Women are the hope for the present and the key to a better world. It is power to the women, which is power to stronger humanity, respecting women's and girls' rights as human rights. It is imperative we stop the discrimination against womankind and see the identity of a merit. Let's stop the oppression and together heed the true call to service without bias. Just as the earth revolves round the soil, birthing new seasons, then the heart of the world can revolve under the sun, birthing new seasons of transformation for a better world crowned with progress. Yes, we can do this together. Lovely P. Ayo, thank you. Thank you so much, Lovely, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, continuing with your presentation, I just want to add one thing. While we are creating pressure on the women to have the child, and uh, I think it's entirely their decisions to have the child or not, not to create the pressure, oppressions, you know, right to select, uh, you know, whether he, she is ready for the motherhood or not. So that's uh, one of the greatest opportunity not to create oppression or any kind of pressure on the women to yes. being a mother. Rather, if she is happy what she is doing, accept that what she is. So that's a wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your way of talking and a powerful voice indeed. That's what we need in this, you know, for this present and the upcoming future also. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. His Excellency, Raina Khatri Tanton. Over to ma'am and we are happy to hear you. Raina ma'am. So good evening friends, all the way from India. This is Raina Khatri Tanton. Uh, ma'am, could you please speak louder? Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, but uh, very... Uh... Are you able to hear now? I think now... Yes, now we can hear you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so good evening to all the proud dignitaries here. It's a pleasure first to be here on this panel with such honorable dignitaries. Thank you very much. If you have a microphone or something... Uh... Are you still finding... Uh, that would be helpful. Yes. It's okay, Karen, please. Okay. Yeah. So, so much. I think um, I'll, I'll be not taking too much of the time, so don't worry. I think uh, I just wanted to bring in a change in the aspect of how we see the world today. Today, on such a powerful day, I think so many of us have gotten to share the beauty of women and the empowered women that we see today. And the most important aspect that we see is one special day changing everything out there. I feel that this is a very different perspective that we need to see that women are already an encompassed circle of influence. Everything that happens in our life, whether it's personal or professional, is totally, totally taken with the empowered woman. A little short poem which I've written, I would like to share with you. The empowered woman today, she moves through the world with sense of confidence and grace. Her once 
reckless spirit now tempered by wisdom quietly yet firmly she speaks her truth without doubt or hesitation she has not only broken shackles but also leads her own creation of a new world now she understands what it means to live and let live and how much to ask for herself and how much to give because she is one person who is seeding the thought not only as a child but also into the family yet staying strong and generous at heart the inner beauty innate truly sets her apart like the mythical phoenix yet she is risen from ashes and soared into a plane of existence unfettered by things that we pose as resistance let me tell you this one thing that we understand today it begins only with you are you ready to make that gender equality free are you today ready to seed that equality in every child that we see today we have this gender injustice only because we need to work on a mindset change and not on a thought leadership that